Hi, this is Frank Taylor with the May 18th Monday edition of Nature in Your Backyard. And today I'm going to revisit a topic that we've already done. Um, if you go back and look at some of my videos, I did a video on the American giant millipede. And it was giant. It was like as big as my hand. And we featured that for that episode, and we compared millipedes and centipedes. So I want to review about millipedes. Millipedes are organisms that have lots of legs, and the word milli means a thousand, and the word centi means a hundred. Well, millipedes don't have a thousand legs, but they have a lot more than centipedes. Um, a millipede might have 300, 350 legs. They're pretty harmless in terms of biting. They can't bite you. Um, so you can, if you pick them up, they won't bite. Well, a centipede can't. And millipedes feed on decaying leaves. And some estimates say that they, they recycle an enormous quantity of leaf matter. I've read some studies where in local areas they felt like 30 to 50 percent of the leaf litter was eaten and recycled uh, by millipedes alone. Today's millipede is called the cherry millipede. And the reason it's called the cherry millipede is if you pick him up and shake him in your fist gently like that and get him a little bit annoyed, he will um, uh, release hydrogen cyanide gas and uh, uh, another substance called benzyl aldehyde. And those two things have a distinct cherry-like or almond-like odor. And they do it as a defense. Hydrogen cyanide is very, very toxic. I read in one article that they estimate the hydrogen cyanide in a uh, Appalachian millipede could kill as, ma or, uh, as many as 18 birds. That's, that's a lot of toxin, and it depends on which millipede you have. I've been able to handle them and smell them and have had no um, uh, bad results uh, from doing that. But like I always say, it's always good to, to wash your hands after. Even the American giant millipede, while it doesn't actually release hydrogen cyanide gas, it does release a uh, foul-smelling substance that is po poisonous and will actually stain your hands yellow. So let's take a look at the cherry millipede and we'll talk a little bit more about its features as we look at it. Be right back. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And here's to make this invasive. It's like top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's So here we are in my backyard. And um, like I've told you with all my organisms, when I when I'm walking around and I find something, I like to bring them home and put them in a container. Um, and I like these containers because you can see through them and you can look at the organism through the side. But then they also have a nice secure top, um, but gives them plenty of oxygen, plenty of air circulation, which is important uh, for living things. So I tried to recreate the habitat for my millipede so that while I got ready uh, to show them to you and I got a chance to, to look at them myself, um, I put them in millipede habitat. Where do millipedes live? Well, they live in the leaf litter. Um, and they like moist, wet, decaying leaf litter. Sometimes you find them under logs and rocks and stuff. But this is what they, they eat. Um, so let's go see if I can find our millipede and our subject for today. And there he is. Let me introduce you to the cherry millipede. The cherry millipede gets its name not from its color. It's not cherry colored. You can see he's black and he's yellow. But he gets its name from the fact that if he's disturbed, if he thinks something's going to eat him, he will release hydrogen cyanide gas um, uh, and a benzyl aldehyde that smells like cherries. Um, hydrogen cyanide gas is poisonous, 
Um, and some estimates that I've read online said that a particular species of Appalachian millipedes can release enough hydrogen cyanide to kill 18 birds. Um, I think that's a pretty extreme, you know, discussion about that. But it does tell you that, you know, they do release this substance uh, to protect themselves. Now, as far as biting, this guy can't bite. Um, uh, you're safe to pick him up. But like I always say, you know, after you handle a, a living organism, it's always good practice to wash your hands, particularly if they're uh, an American giant millipede or another uh, millipede species. Um, this guy, I think I, I've handled him now so much to taking pictures of him and uh, getting him ready for today's video that he is completely confident that I'm not going to eat him and um, he has not released any kind of odor at all. Some of the literature I read said, you know, you could take him like this and shake him up in your hand a little bit and then smell, and you'll smell that cherry almond odor. And I've done that with some millipedes, but uh, this one um, is not releasing that odor for me. Now, uh, notice that um, he has got uh, a segmented body. Whoa, where'd he go? And um, uh, uh, arthropods all have segmented bodies and a hard exoskeleton. Arthropods need to shed that exoskeleton to grow. So if this guy is going to grow after he eats and gets enough nutrition for his advance in size, then he has to shed this, this uh, skeleton. So things that are arthropods are things like crabs and lobsters and shrimp and insects and millipedes and centipedes. They're all arthropods. And the millipedes are in their own little group. The word milli means a thousand, um, so uh, uh, this guy has a lot of legs, not actually a thousand, and I haven't got around to counting them. Um, and a lot of millipedes, as they get older, add segments, and so they'll get more and more legs as they get older. Millipedes eat um, this leaf litter. This is his real habitat here. This is where he lives. This is what he does. Um, bright color is to warn predators that, hey, I'm dangerous, or I might be dangerous. Some organisms, like there's a species of fly that has black and yellow markings, so they look like a yellow jacket. And organisms, um, and even people, will leave him alone because he's black and yellow and looks like a yellow jacket. Um, a lot of organisms advertise their danger by uh, a pattern of yellow or orange, black and, and yellow, orange and black uh, striping, like a bumblebee, a yellow jacket, a tiger, all are saying, hey, I'm dangerous. It's sort of a universal uh, coloration. So some of these millipedes are actually toxic, and some are not toxic. But the ones that are not toxic look just like the ones that are toxic. So what ends up is most animals will try to stay away from them. So this is our Appalachian native cherry millipede. Um, this is something that you can definitely find outdoors. I want you to go out and see if you can find one. Generally, I find these just walking across the trail in front of me. And that's how I found this one. Well, oh, as always, I had fun sharing with you today uh, about cherry millipedes. Um, remember, this is something that, that you can find, well, in your backyard. If you live in Virginia or in the East Coast, uh, there are millipedes everywhere. Uh, look at um, um, wet, moist leaf litter. Look under logs. Uh, pick up some leaf litter and, and put it in a, in a container like this and just kind of sort through it and stuff. And I'll bet you, you'll find some millipedes and who knows what else you'll find. I always say, you never know what you're gonna find. So uh, millipedes, remember, can secrete uh, toxic substances. That's how they defend themselves. And you'll be okay with it as long as you don't eat those millipedes. Um, and wash your hands carefully after handling any wildlife. So uh, uh, millipedes, go outside. Hey, and remember, um, fact check me. 
um, don't believe everything you see on TV. When I give you a name of something, that gives you an opportunity to go look it up online and see what you can learn about it too. Have a great time, go outside, experience the outdoors, experience nature, and see what you can find.